history. We are getting late in the Syracuse mile. Ricky Graham is leading consistently, and neither Carr nor Parker have been able to draft back by him the last couple of laps. Atherton is desperately hanging on to fourth spot, and it looks more and more like Graham may be able to do what has never been done before to win five of these races in a row. Are Parker and Carr working together with the draft to try to run him down? No, I think they're working independently right now. It's a free-for-all. It's best man. Everybody have at it. Well, it has all come down to this. One lap to go. Steve Ferracci waves the white flag over Ricky Graham, Chris Carr, Scott Parker, and Kevin Atherton. Ricky Graham is a half mile away from history if he can hold off the Harley factory team through turn three and turn four. Carr is there as they turn for home. Graham runs it in deep down through the little dip. Parker slid wide. Parker is off in the loose stuff. It's a two-man battle for the victory. Carr is in perfect position to draft. Here they come to the finish line. Oh, Carr got by, but I don't know if he beat him before the strike. Did Graham make history or not? The photo finish camera is directly at the start finish line. Yes, Graham has been declared the winner. Here's how it looked from our angle, past start finish. It is a virtual dead heat, but Graham got there first. Graham wins the fifth race in a row, a new AMA record. Number one for the weekend and focused on the championship, Graham chose this opportunity to tell his fans on television the dark and painful side of his story. Rocket Ricky dominated the sport in the early 80s, won two championships. Then he got hurt, lost his factory ride, began a long, slow slide that bottomed out early in 1990. The memories come hard. Just, you know, I'd gotten in trouble you know, with, uh, with drinking. You know, I got in trouble, I got pulled over on the way to a race and uh, going to Pomona and um, I just got detained by the law because of uh, because I was drinking so I had to uh, that wasn't the night before the race I still could have went to the race but then that then after it happened I just didn't feel I didn't feel up to it so I didn't go I just didn't go and it just uh, I don't know why I didn't do it. It was real, it was real uh, strange, because I knew I was really throwing away my career at that time. I was driving down the road going, what am I doing? I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Actually, bike owner Skip Eakin gave Ricky a second chance, and he responded by winning the Springfield Mile in May of 91. But then he was arrested again for driving while intoxicated, and Eakin dropped him. Ricky's battle with alcohol addiction was a textbook case. He was the last to know he had a problem. I was racing. I was trying to do the best I could. You know, you don't realize it when it's happening. I mean, you just, I mean, hell, I didn't know that I was, you know, worrying everybody sick about what I was doing. You know, but uh, uh, you just don't know when you're doing it. Graham soon found an ally in Johnny Goad, who acknowledged Ricky's drinking problem and gave him a ride anyway. So at San Jose Mile, when Johnny took me aside and he said, hey, you know, I really you know, think you can you know, really you know, beat these guys. And he goes, and everybody says that you can. He goes, and I think you can. And uh, he goes, and I want to I do it with you. you know, and I, and uh, that was the end of 91. And then that's when, uh, uh, then we went into the off season. And uh, you know, I was still going along. And, it got to be about December, and then I just uh, said, okay, that's it. Said, I'm not going not gonna to drink anymore. I got to uh, just start getting serious. Drinking behind him, Graham has climbed steadily back to the peak of his profession. Winning has become routine, but beating the bottle was the victory that mattered most. Obviously, alcohol is very addictive, and it's not easy just to put the bottle down and, uh, and, uh, it's kind of hard to do, you know, and I was going through a hard time. And, but then finally, I just did it. You know, I mean, just, you know, I, mean I had to do, I had to either like, go and get some help or something like that, which I didn't want to do, and, uh, or, uh, or just do it myself. So I just did it. 
Years later, those words are painful and poignant. Johnny and Sarah Goad believed in Ricky Graham and gave him a chance to show the world his best, his unique ability and courage. All of us, all of Ricky's fans, try to remember him that way. Johnny doesn't hesitate when asked the moment he saw Ricky at his best. Oklahoma City, you know, uh, I, I gave up on him. You know, he was out there racing around like ninth or 10th place, about 15th lap, and I said, Ricky, get a fifth anyway. So, you know, that's the worst we've done all year. And uh, he just kept coming, you know. And that right there was, all he did was just back off the throttle and stay off the brakes. And I'm proud of that night because all of America saw Graham at his best. Parker and Jones were side by side. That I believe was ninth and 10th. Davis, remember his first pass of the night was around the outside. He's still making that line work as he comes up alongside Carr. I thought he had him. He broke loose for a moment. And Carr hangs on. Ferris has caught them. He is now fourth. Ricky Graham is sixth. He's up behind Jay Springsteen in his quest to win a sixth straight race. He's got an awful lot of ground to make up. I was leading the race and uh, going away, and uh, it, Ricky came through the pack, and ran me down, and beat me with about three or four laps to go. And I mean, I probably had a straightaway or more on him at one time, and he put on a charge that uh, that's unbelievable to come from that far back and uh, be able to win the race. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I remember that. Race. That's not an easy track to pass on, and you know he came from eighth or ninth and uh, a ways back and put it on us pretty badly. We're back in Oklahoma City, and look who's on the move. Number three, Ricky Graham, has run down the leaders and is around Rodney Ferris. Graham, in his quest for a sixth straight national victory, is just charging. He's alongside Moorhead now. And remember, he came from deep, deep in the pack. How does a guy, Bill, come to life halfway through the race and start passing the likes of these people who have led the whole way? Well, it's very difficult because he just finds different lines. He makes the motorcycle work where the others aren't. That's the key. He's able to go where the others aren't and make it work just as good, if not better. Ricky Graham is second. Chris Carr is in his sight. Ten laps ago, Graham wasn't even part of the story. We were talking about Rodney Ferris, number 92, as a potential winner, or wondering if it was going to be Moorhead or Carr who had the good stuff at the end. Now, suddenly, Ricky Graham, as he has all season, has become the dominant rider in the race. He's won five straight. He's going for six. He's all over Chris Carr, and I get the feeling this is inevitable. If you can run it by all those other guys, you can run it by Chris and Ricky does. Yeah, Ricky just run it in underneath them just like he was on a rail. And boy, Chris was startled, I'm sure. Let's see if Chris has something left for him. I wonder if Carr had any idea that Graham was coming. I don't think so. I mean, that happened in a heartbeat. Chris is looking to see if any more people are coming along. <laughs> I think the battle, though, is up front. And Ricky Graham just looks invincible right now. White flag flies, one lap to go. Carr has one more opportunity. He runs up along the outside, now looks to the inside, and then slips. And that may be the difference. That rear wheel spun for just a moment, and Ricky Graham is gone. He's opened up two, three bike legs. Carr comes back on the bottom. Now, nah, too little, too late. Ricky Graham has won his sixth consecutive Grand National victory. Team Undo will celebrate again tonight. Yeah,